Hey guys, welcome back and thanks for tuning in to this review of the North American Arms Talo exclusive Bug Out 22. Thanks to North American Arms for getting this gun into my hands for T&E. And uh, I've done a lot of shooting with it in the many months that I've had it as they've been very patient with me in preparing this review. Uh, before I go any further, we'll go ahead and do a quick cylinder check on this guy to uh, confirm that there are no rounds in there, no brass, so it all looks good. We'll go ahead and stop on the half lock there. All right, so getting into this gun a little bit, talking about its construction, talking about how it works and all that stuff. Uh, this gun is really similar to sort of the rest of the line of mini revolvers that North American Arms makes. And I made a video, uh, what, what, when was it? Back in the summertime, talking about basically their revolvers on the whole. I love their revolvers. So I've seen them in gun store shelves, you know, in the cases, I've seen pictures and I've seen videos of them. Uh, like I said in the video before, I was never all that interested in getting one for myself, although I thought they were cool looking, until I got one in hand and shot it. And after that, I said, I'm sold. I gotta have one of these right away. Uh, again, so thanks to North American Arms for getting this guy into my hands for doing uh, the full test on. And by the way, they did hook me up with kind of a custom serial number there. So <laughs> I just think that's awesome. Thanks guys for that. Um, price, do you wanna know price? You probably wanna know price. I've been seeing this online for around, what was it, 270, something like that. So for what it is and how unique it is, I think that's actually pretty good, but uh, you can be the judge of that. Uh, weight on it, 6.9 ounces, naked and empty, all right? So roughly seven ounces. So looking at a couple of other specs, we've got a barrel length of, I think it's about one and a half inches. All right, real nice and short on that. Then of course the um, 22 long rifle cylinder on it, an overall length of, I'm gonna put that at just over five inches, just barely five inches, and an overall height of, I'm gonna say, uh, with the hammer up, about two and three quarter inches. So, you know, pretty nice nice sizes on this. And then of course, with the cylinder, uh, the width on that is roughly three quarters of an inch, slightly more than three quarters of an inch. Just sized perfectly for this little Plano box that the gun comes with. All right, this little Plano box here, waterproof, lockable. You can see there are little holes right there. You can put padlocks through that to lock this thing up. And then of course, it keeps the water out. Um, not only that, but it comes with these sort of little rubber, um, pads, plates, whatever you want to call it. So it's got this nice base to it, but then also this sort of cover. So you can lay that there. You can set the gun just like so inside the case. And again, fits absolutely perfectly. All right, could not be better. In addition to the gun, you can also fit a small box of ammo in there. These are some CCI Quiets. How about some Federal 22 long rifle? So that should fit in there just about perfectly. It's a little tight. I think certain brands will fit a little better, but that should go just about right in there. And maybe that Federal is actually, that box is a little too big. Certain brands, like I said, will fit better than others. Let's try those quiets. Will those fit in there? Yeah, those fit pretty good actually. So yeah, there you go. That, that shuts in there perfectly. You don't have to have a box. A box is a nice convenient way to, you know, to load this box up, but you could just have like a little baggie or something full of loose rounds. Um, so if you, let's say you have a brand that you really, really like and the box for whatever reason doesn't fit, um, just throw those into a loose baggie and you'll be set to go. Um, CCI Velocitors, there's a good choice right there. We'll talk about all those rounds here shortly, show you some targets and all that stuff in a little bit as well. Now, 22 long rifle, not ideal for defensive use. You can amplify the abilities of 22 long rifle by carrying something like some velocitors by the way they shoot just fine through this gun, shot them quite a bunch, um, and um, there's, there's absolutely no problem with shooting these through this gun, not that I've found. It will shoot uh, snake shells, those little 22 shot shells, it'll shoot those as well. Didn't try them, but according to their marketing, it works just fine, I wanna try some of those. But at seven ounces in such a tiny little package, it's extremely tempting to turn this into a defensive gun of some kind. Whether this becomes your primary self-defense gun or some sort of a backup, or as North American Arms really sort of markets this as, 
a gun that you would throw into that little Plano box, throw into a backpack or stow somewhere in your vehicle and have at the ready for that emergency. So you get, you know, you're boating, you're caught in a rainstorm, whatever, it doesn't matter. Your gun's protected and ready for some sort of minimal last ditch defense. I love that idea, guys. I absolutely love that idea. So I'm sold on it. And uh, I think, I think, you know, I, I love this thing. One last thing to note on this, the Talo version with this orange grip, this orange Hogue grip is not the only version uh, anymore. Just uh, recently I saw on the North American Arms Facebook page, they now have a black grip version. Don't know if that's considered a Talo version or not, but that is going to be available as well. So look out for that. One other important detail to note is that front sight on there, which is a big dot sight and it is tritium. Okay, I'm kind of slightly muzzling my pinky here, but I already checked it for safety, so don't worry about it, guys. Big dot with tritium and that nice white ring around there, so it's useful in the dark, it's useful wherever. So you're, you know, the $270 price tag and you're getting a tritium big dot on there. Huge, okay, pretty huge. All right, let's compare this cut against a couple other things. Well, one other great defensive option, in my opinion. Great, eh, good, Ruger LCP2. I've actually been carrying this quite a lot for quite some time since it first came out. Carrying it a lot, using it a lot, listen to that rattle. Does it affect the performance of the gun? So far, no. So far, no, but uh, this thing is definitely broken in. <laughs> broken in and then some. Uh, but let's compare them for size, all right? You can see that width-wise, they're kind of on par. Um, as far as every other dimension is concerned, uh, I'd say the North American Arms has got to beat. As far as weight is concerned, it's definitely got to beat. All right, so the Ruger comes in at 9.4 ounces naked. I did not realize that. That's not bad at all. Wow. Under 10 ounces naked. I think I knew that before, actually. Seven ounces for the North American Arms, okay? So with all that in mind, weight in mind, capacity, this one carrying six plus one, this one carrying five in the cylinder, and it's a long time to reload that. I haven't shown you that yet, but I will here in a second. This one, obviously, you can have the spare magazine, so you know the, uh, the semi-auto, all the advantages of carrying a semi-auto are present in the LCP2. None of that's present in the Bug Out 22. Um, better choice right here, the LCP2, for daily carry defense. Definitely, definitely. But when when you know that you're going to be extremely limited as far as what you can carry and perhaps the propensity of needing your firearm is going to be extremely low, yeah, man, whatever, dude, go for it. I like it. Right now we are closed, our hammer is closed. So that's a full cock, all right? That's not where we wanna be. What we wanna do is go to a half cock position, right there, and we've got this pin that pops out real easy. And of course this little notch on top, which I absolutely love. Wrap the finger into that, nice little index point. Thumb right here on this little rampy kind of latch thing. You press in on that, slides right out. Okay, let's show you that one more time. You can see the little clip right there, watch it. See how that lifts and unclips? There it is. So that just pulls straight out. Cylinder rolls right out like that. And that is where you put your rounds. So one, two, three, four, five rounds right there. Load it back up, roll it in. I like to roll it in from this side here. It seems to be easier. Don't know if it'll go in as easily both sides, but it seems to be easier for me going in from that side. Pin back in place, that's it. That is all you do. Can you get fast with that and do semi-quick reloads? Perhaps, but uh, never as fast as your average revolver. Um, I would say the type, you know, by average revolver, I mean one where the cylinder actually swings out. Let's do a little revolver comparison uh, real quick, actually. So there's the North American Arms Bug Out 22, obviously, shows you how that whole thing works. <clears throat> Let's get into a very, uh, very common sort of platform here with the Ruger SP-101, all unloaded as you can see there. Wearing, what are these, Pacmare? 
pack mirror grips. Uh, swap these things on from, what was the other one I had on recently? Can't remember what they were called. But swap these on in place of it, like them a lot better, a lot better. Uh, but anyway, this is your average revolver right here, or very close to your average revolver, the SP-101, all right? So you've got some sort of a release right here. Cylinder pops out, you slap this thing to eject your rounds, you reload, you pop it back in, you're ready to start shooting again. Okay, let's get into another type uh, right over here, and this is the Heritage Arms Rough Rider right there. And uh, you'll see a lot of other revolvers that can that work this way. So you get some kind of a half cock going on, and then you've got a little door right there. And then what you do to eject your rounds is you've got this rod here on the front, ejects your rounds through that little door, rotate, eject, e rotate, eject, rotate, eject, done ejecting, insert, 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 so forth like that. So, you know, that's just another revolver type right there, okay, the Heritage Rough Rider. And again, it's just kind of an example of how some other revolvers work. While we have it on the table, and since I think it's awesome, how about this guy right here? Black powder only, 44 caliber on this one right here. This is the Pieta whatever, I don't know, but Pieta 44 caliber. It's a black powder, all right? And it's not anything like the other revolvers here on the table. Obviously doesn't take uh, cartridges, takes your, um, your wadding and your powder and your primers and your ball and all separately and uh, slowly, but these things are sweet as well. I honestly haven't even shot this guy. I bought it to be a uh, sort of a decorative piece, a little bit of a wall hanger. Really cheap. I think I got it for 150 bucks. Brass framed, read, read up on the brass frame, and people said they're, they're going to stretch out the more you shoot them. So I just decided, you know what? At 150 bucks, I'm okay with this being a wall hanger. So I actually removed all the cones, so you cannot put primers on this guy. I'll show you that there. Remove the cones. So you can't, you couldn't shoot this thing if you wanted to. And pulling the trigger can't do anything, okay? Doesn't do anything but make a little snappy sound. That's it. So Lovely gun, beautiful gun, classic, uh, 1851 Navy model, I believe. Uh, but never gonna shoot it, and may get another black powder in the future, but uh, that's just a look at sort of, you know, other revolver types. So I think we've covered sort of what you're getting into when you buy one of these little bug out 22s. The, uh, the mechanism for releasing and removing the, um, the cylinder and all that, is probably my favorite of everything that North American Arms has right now. Now, their Top Break Ranger 2, that may replace the bug out as my favorite North American Arms mini revolver because that thing is sweet. Higher price tag for sure, lots of R&D, lots of work going into creating that gun, but uh, it is gonna be a sweet little shooter, no doubt. A little bit heavier, probably, but um, also I think it is 22 mag. Another real popular one, and you saw this at the SHOT Show booth review, the 22 mag uh, pug, also from North American Arms. I believe that also has the Hogue grip on it. And I think it's only in 22 mag. Also has a pretty easy pin removal, but in my opinion, this one's simpler and easier. Just slide it straight out like that. So, so nice, so easy to do. I've really enjoyed this thing and shot a lot of rounds through it, as I said before. Let's show you a couple of the targets before we say goodbye. So, let's see where we started off at. We got uh, a bunch of them here to show you, and I did a bunch of shooting with a bunch of different rounds, obviously. So, here's the first target. Uh, not great groups, in my opinion. Could have done better, probably, and did do a little bit better later on, so I'll show you that, that stuff here. Um, that is actually the second target. I think this is the first one. Yeah, this is the first one. So we've got um, Federal Champion right here, 40 grain, this stuff. And this is the group that I did there. <laughs> All right, so it pulled really low and gigantically wide. What else did we get? We've got some Winchester 37 grain. That's this stuff right here. And kind of wide there and definitely low also. Next, we've got some CCI Quiets. That's this stuff that I had out earlier. Um, easy to get kind of very central, central with that. Uh, I don't know if it's the recoil, I don't know what it is, but something about shooting the Quiets was a lot easier and somehow was a lot, um, seemed to be more accurate. Also, shooting Quiets through that gun, tons of fun. 
tons of fun. Love the way they sound. That little, like a little cap gun. It's awesome. A Gila 40 grain did pretty well with that initially. And CCI 40 grain, that would have been these mini mags here, I think. I think those mini mags. Moving on to the next target. We worked a little bit harder. Actually, this is all one-handed, but we uh, got a bunch of different groups here with this. So we've got the uh, Federal Champion 40 grain again. The Win 37 grain widened out over here. We've got the CCI Mini Mag out here, 40 grain, that guy. Then we've got, um, let's see, CCI Velocitors. Velocitors, dude. Yeah, that is a bang right there. That's the group I got with the Velocitors. Mini Mag Hollow Points these guys right here and that's our group not bad not too bad Aguila went pretty wide this time and I'm kind of threw a question mark into that target because I wasn't sure if I'm circling the right rounds but we've got it way out to here and all the way over there and that's our five then we've got the CCI quiets once again still you know grouping pretty small which I like I don't know why the quiets are doing well at uh, 710 feet per second something about that is just easier on this tiny little gun. What did I say? One and a half inch barrel, something like that. Last target to show you. Um, just did a couple of them on this one because I was running out of time. Uh, CCI Velocitors did 15 rounds here. Was able to, once again, I did two-handed. That was the last target I showed you. It was all one-handed. This is two-handed. Took my time, tried to take my time and really show you how that all um, you know came together and, and bring that in nice and tight. And it's tight-ish. I still think it's like a three and a half inch group or more. Uh, so yeah, that's what it is. Quiets, again, nine rounds there only, but what is that? Sub two inch group? Around a two inch group. I would say about a two inch group on that. And again, all this was at five yards, okay? I don't think shooting outside of five yards is a very meaningful exercise, so I didn't even try. I did not bring my freaking uh, trigger scale to show you how much this weighs, but it's heavy. That's a heavy little trigger, and I want you to get a close look at that trigger, okay? It's like pressing on the head of a screw, okay? So it's got a, ni got a nice bit of knurling there, so that's, you know, your finger's not gonna slip off of that once you start pressing on it, but it's just this little ball all right, there's no lever of any kind. It's just this little ball you're pressing on. Again, like I said, like the head of a screw, you're just pressing and pressing and pressing until that thing pops. Now, we've already shown that this thing is clear. We'll do it one more time. Hold on. Shouldn't dry fire a 22, but I'll do it once for you guys, all right? Here's what it looks like. So you're pressing that trigger real slow, real hard, and there it goes, all right? So it's a hard, Kind of heavy trigger and that's about how it works so um again you can get used to it but it's not like any other trigger i've tried in any case love this little gun and that's not just because it's got my name on it which it does <laughs> this thing is awesome these all these guns from north american arms are incredibly fun this will not be the last one that i own i'm going to get a hold of another one at some point i don't know which uh, they're incredibly fun that's the number one reason i like them i think they are marginally practical for defense against you know little critters and stuff that get a little bold and want to hurt you and potentially against two-legged guys that you know also want to hurt you <laughs> there it is guys that's the North American Arms Bug Out 22. Kind of a longish video. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you got some good information from it. I'm a late Boy Scout. Thanks so much for tuning in. We'll see you on the next one.